the lotteries have been forced down the route of digitalization. They've been pushed that way by the pandemic. So all the retail outlets are open now, um, but a lot of people have got used to buying their tickets online, using an app to buy their tickets, validating their tickets, and, and having the convenience of, if they happen to have a winning ticket, the money being paid directly into an e-wallet, which in the past, you know, small wins, you know, three number wins and things like that would often just not get claimed. Lotteries have been forced to look at what they're doing online and potentially upgrade, improve um, their online offering. The second thing that's driven that is the regularization of online gambling. So lotteries are facing direct competition for the playing euro. A lottery is a game that happens over an extended period of time and younger players tend to want things to happen very quickly. If they're going to attract these players, they need to digitalize. Lotteries use large um, legacy on-premise platforms connected to private networks, connected to retail terminals out in the field. Um, those retail terminals are often specific terminals that are sitting on a retailer's countertop, taking up space, connected via a, a network connection that is paid for by the lottery back to the central system, and that's where everything's managed. It's expensive to maintain, um, and it's expensive to upgrade. Technologies used by, shall we say, more commercial online companies uh, are far lighter. Cloud-based, using very light, thin client uh, retail applications that are relatively, compared to lottery, they're relatively inexpensive to deploy, to maintain. They don't use private networks. They make use of the existing uh, networks that are in place, existing Wi-Fi hotspots, etc., protected by very strong uh, security measures like VPNs um, and, and the like. So all of a sudden you've got this, this comparison of a, 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 an, online, an, um, an online lottery costing 30% of what it would cost to deploy a retail lottery. Um, even if they're doing retail with, as I said, a lightweight application sitting on existing point of sale devices. That's probably the key difference. The second difference really is content. There is a far greater range of content in the commercial world. Uh, the Every Matrix platform, for example, has 21,000 different games from about 150 different providers. Not all of that content would be appropriate for lotteries, but a lot of it is. So players want content, they want to see new stuff. We know what we're good at. We're good at content, payments, the player management side of things with responsible gaming. But CRM is not our game, so we make it easy for third parties to connect to our system. It doesn't take six months and a hugely expensive project to, for example, connect Optimove uh, into our system so the lottery can do some excellent player segmentation. That is a key difference um, in the openness and the flexibility of the system. Um, if they want to be able to do that, um, then they need to move to a platform that is more flexible. You know, modules that can be plugged in or plugged out, replaced by other modules. Lotteries are often governed by different sets of rules. They often report to a different uh, branch of the, of the ministry than, uh, than commercial uh, licensing would be. So in some ways it's easier, but in other ways it's more difficult and they are far more, um, shall we say, conservative. They, they are very hot on responsible gaming, making sure that no player gets squeezed too much by the, by the, the operator, making sure that people stay within their abilities um, and their bandwidth really to, to, to spend money on the platform. The primary difficulty, generally speaking, is the amount of time it takes. The decision-making process is much longer, long-winded. We are, a lot of the business is done by our RFPs, which takes time and resources to respond to. It is challenging and the barriers to entry are very, very high. It's probably why there are, there are three main players in that side of the market today. Lotteries uh, tend to outsource most of the work that, that, that they do, so they will rely on their supplier to do a lot of, you know, for example, the front end of the website or, or deployments or managing the, managing the platform. They operate on much thicker margins as well. So payouts on lotteries can go from 45% to maybe 65% for a, shall we say, a traditional lottery game. For scratch cards uh, or, or the instant win games online, 
tend not to go above about 85% and generally are much lower than that. So there's a lot of room for a supplier to get involved. You, you have to jump the hurdles. That's the most important thing. And that's what every matrix has been able to do increase our visibility in the lottery space. We're becoming more and more visible and our wins are starting to attract attention. I think the company by the end of this year will be a much more rounded company with regard to its offer. Uh, for example, we're working on the retail part of, uh, 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 of our platform to enable uh, retail connectivity to put terminals out in the field or to use existing terminals, but with our software sitting on the platform. So I see as being far more connected end to end and I see as being far more appealing to the state regulated entities with the kind of business that, that we're winning. Every Matrix is a, is a company that was born out of technology. Um, and I think as a B2B provider, uh, we're going to be on everybody's lips. I'm all totally convinced about that.